and welcome to our Muggy Saturday edition of AP Macroeconomic Graphs. It's fun. Alright, the ones that I'm going to run through today, the ones that you're most likely to see on the exam, are the nine graphs that are listed up here on the board. Now, some of the units as specified by the college board use these graphs they get recycled periodically you know we start with a basic circular flow we add government later so some of these you're going to see basically throughout the course so you might look at the syllabus that you have and say oh wait there's more graphs than this but if you really pay attention we've got the ppf and maybe three different units so this really is it and you might see lots of variations on these things, but they're not going to be that different. So we're going to start with the PPF and cover different shapes of the PPF and what the different points on it, under it, beyond it imply. Circular flow for different types of economies. You might see a question specify a private closed economy or a public open economy, and you need to make sure that you can understand the differences among those. Supply and demand, which you're also going to see in micro, the principles are not different. You know, we get a little cross-pollination there, which is good. But we need to understand the factors that are determinants of demand and supply, meaning they can shift the curves, and the ones that do not. Shift versus movement is a really good principle to understand, and we have had some confusion with that lately in the review. Next, we've got the business cycle. My guess would be that you're not going to have to graph this, but you'll probably have some questions about, um, you know, different types of policy that uh, the government would enact at different points in the business cycle, and that's what a lot of the current events lately, you know, dealing with the economy are, are addressing. Investment demand is another one that you. I would guess we'll not have to draw, but you may see some questions about it. It's not hard. ADAS is the big one. This one, really important. Because for years on the AP exam, the big question number one on the free response has been dealing with an ADAS model for some basic situation. So we'll look at a couple of different ways that the question will be asked, a couple of different ways to draw it. My preference is for the Keynesian model, but the College Board has been, you know, trying to get people away from that in the past few years, so we'll look at that in a couple different ways, too. Number seven, money market and loanable funds. Very strong possibility that you'll have to draw these side by side and explain how a situation affecting one will affect the other. It's not hard, but you've got to make sure that your shifts in both markets match up, because if you've got things going two different directions, there's no way that's going to be right. Phillips curve is dealing with inflation and unemployment. Um, the conventional wisdom is that there's a trade-off there. But as we have seen lately, we haven't seen this in the United States really for decades, you can have a high inflation period with high unemployment. It's not pretty, but we can explain that using the Phillips curve, sort of. And number nine, the four exchange markets or comparative currency markets where you have supply of one, demand for the other, euro versus yen, dollar versus something else. There are some tricks to that one and I'll show you an easy way to remember how to do it so you don't mess it up. But that's basically the scope of all the graphs. It's not that much information and I'm going to run through them as concisely as possible.